I'm Matthew McMillan from the upcoming. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for, for joining me. And um, congratulations on the film as well. Um, if we could maybe start by all of you just briefly introducing yourselves and, you know, your relationship to the film. I'm Sky Lowry and I play Tattoo Girl in the film. Um, I don't actually have a name, which we can go into at some point. And I am the love interest of... I'm George Webster. I play Charlie in the movie, um, who is a kind of down on his luck, uh, boppish idiot who gets into some uh, some pretty dark adventures, which are, of course, directed by. Uh, I'm I don't know where to look on it. Where, where do, uh, yeah, we're all in different ways. Where are you? Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I'm Jamie Patterson. I wrote and directed the movie. I, had to, I need to say anything that that's it no, that's perfect. No, thank you for making that so smooth as well that was just seamless there you go seamless absolutely seamless um so just starting with you jamie um you know how did this project come about very basically how, how did the process begin um how much can we say on here like what can we use all sorts of words and uh can, can, can we can i say like can i say penis i'm sh I, I think that that's acceptable it's not the BBC. Okay. It's not the BBC. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah. I think we have, oh, it's a whole different story, but I think we do have to recut the trailer because we say sex in the trailer or something like that. Now it's a weird what? thing. Uh, it's bad. Um, the, I, if that's my wife, I got my wife a small hoover as a present, and that's what you can probably hear in the background. She loves a small hoover. So if you can hear that. Just for crumbs. It's a crumbs hoover, really. She's uh, Where'd it come from? Um... <laughs> I guess it was inspired by like I I'm like one of those like nineties kids. So like I used to uh, those movies of the nineties like True Romance, um Wonder well, Wonderland's a bit later, Wild at Heart, those sort of um those movies were kind of the movies that I would sneak downstairs and watch when I was a kid when I still lived at home with my folks and they kind of stuck with me. Um and I always loved those movies. Uh, I love the, the tone of them, the darkness of them, the sort of dark comedy element, the Pulp Fictions, if you like. And I kind of always wanted to do something like that, but make it very British. Um, so this was going years back and, and make some, and something that I felt was doable on, on a relatively low budget as well. Um, and like anything where I come up with an idea, I felt it normally starts with a scene or a character or something like that. And then I sort of build the film around it a bit like they do the mission impossible films not that this is like a mission impossible film uh but you know you come what up with this great parallel yeah i know right well you, you come up with the stunts you know tom's like oh i want to you know, throw myself off this building or whatever it might be and then you kind of piece together a story around that this was basically the same except i had the the scene where someone can I, the, the the penis in the face scene can i say that that's okay right you, you absolutely can Oh, great. Um, I had that scene and then I kind of built this uh, around. Just it. like Mission Impossible. Just, Just like, like Mission, Mission Impossible. Impossible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it kind of, I, I, I like these ideas of sort of um, two down on their like the idea of two addicts falling in love, two people that kind of troubled characters falling in love and kind of through that they get themselves deeper and darker and then shit just goes crazy. Um, and the, a film that kind of just, you don't really know what's coming next. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do. But this, this was a few years ago. I probably wrote the script six years ago, six or seven years ago. And then we kind of workshopped it together. So there was like 50 pages. And then I kind of sent it to people and we would workshop a lot, a lot of improvisation in there as well. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I just wanted to make one of those movies, I guess, that someone might sneak downstairs to watch and enjoy. I guess. Yeah, I think it definitely um, changes the way of watching the film, knowing that the entire film blossomed from that scene. I think that that's, that's quite a... I know, for me as well. I'm like, would I have taken it if I knew that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but as far as I know, this is the first time that all three of you have worked together. Um, so I, I guess just... Um, is that correct? D uh, no. No, we've oh. worked... Oh, all three oh, no. of them together in the same thing? Yes. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, technically, I suppose. I mean, we Are did... Uh, I did a 
wrote and directed a TV pilot called Star Dogs, which Jamie produced and Sky was in. Um, but yeah, this is the first thing that as a kind of like threesome, I suppose, that we right, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so what, what, you know, what was the process like before you began production of kind of gelling all the characters together and kind of getting to know the characters and also Sky and George, you know, in building that chemistry between uh, between both of your characters? We didn't really have a lot of time, did we? No. <laughs> so, so what um, was it like then? How, how did the lack of time, uh, you know, how did that feed into how the, the end product uh ended up you know did it did it um did, did it kind of increase the pressure or did it kind of just focus all your minds a little bit more yeah i, I think at least from my perspective i think because we kind of me and sky had worked together very briefly before sky had worked with jamie before i'd worked with jamie before so there was this kind of like trifecta of mm approval you know when you like know somebody who knows somebody you already got like a shorthand like oh you you're approved by somebody who i like so yeah yeah cool so i think me and sky definitely kind of just developed it from there we we knew we got on really well we we knew jamie's style of how he worked and we both really liked that and found that quite like creatively energizing i suppose mm. um and so then you just kind of jump in and you you feel I, I felt safe with Sky. I hope Sky felt safe with me. And you just kind of go, let's just let's just do it. Let's just go in the trenches and and knock this thing out. Um, so it wasn't necessarily like a bad thing that we didn't have the rehearsal time. I don't think it kind of made this run and gun mentality on the shoot of let's figure it out on the day. And I think with that came yeah. a looseness with the performances, with the with the dialogue, with the script, and allowed us that kind of space to improvise and bring bring things off the cuff that as as and when they arrived um, i also think that the the style of script as well like having read it you kind of knew you were going to have to go in all guns blazing like there's going to be sex scenes i mean there's a dick slap you know it, it's there's everything in there so you can't go in feeling coy or shy or anything and just having a lot of banter on set and making it feel comfortable is quite important like from the get-go and um for you sky in particular on, on the press notes I, I realized that it said that your all of your scenes were shot in an incredibly condensed um period of time uh you know what was that like kind of just being sort of very in and out on the set i don't remember that did i was it <laughs> I think that yeah, the the, the well on, on the press press release at least it says that the whole film was shot over ten days and that yeah you, yeah 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 it was. was shot I think only over maybe even one day. Oh no, I know that could be Alice's, Alice's character. character. Yeah. Alice's character, okay. I, I apologize. Uh, apologies. Um, <laughs> but but nevertheless, so was, you know, what is it like um, if you're trying to, you know, build these characters, but you you know you you have barely any time to gel. Um, you know, do you think it creates a kind of spontaneity on set? You know, Jamie as well. What, 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 what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, could, I, I've never, I don't really like rehearsals in general um, on anything I've ever done um, or anything that I, I look to do. Um, I think, I think you there's a there's a chance of like over rehearsing and killing something and, and killing a scene. And I think getting too familiar with something and also having something to compare what you're doing on set to you could smash the shit can i smash the hell out of something on um in a rehearsal and i think you get to set and you're trying to reach and you're trying to grab onto that and you're not fully in the moment so for me i love I, like george said you know it's kind of i'd we'd all kind of work to each other we knew each other i can't you know when the, the casting process really is you know i can watch these guys work i know that they're going to be great for the in the roles it's are we all going to gel are we all going to work together They're same when it comes to a, a crew as well um so I, and i like that i like i like shooting fast we only sort of do two to three takes i like using a first take an awful lot um i think the pace in which we we shoot gives it like a more authentic feel um and going off of that instinct i think just um yeah you know as directors who do 90 takes and i just think for me, that would that would kill a scene, but you know, if it works for David Fincher, he's doing all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. 
Um, yeah. So what do you? Yeah. What do you guys think? What do you think, Sky? Is it what? Does it work not having that rehearsal time? Do you? Would you like rehearsal time? Would you have liked rehearsal time on this? Am I still here? Yeah. <laughs> just like what an existential crisis. <laughs> um. Sorry, it cut out. Um. Yeah. No. No. I thought it. Uh. I really liked the relaxed kind of way that we were allowed to improvise and stuff as well around the script, and that felt like it allowed us to discover our characters as well. And, and I'm also one for like only learning the lines kind of an hour before going on to the scene. So, um, you know, living on the edge there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I I prefer that kind of style of shooting. I think it really helped. And for George and Sky, you know, what was, um, you know, when you first were getting to know these characters and kind of getting to terms with the screenplay, what were for you the, the kind of roots into your character that you, that, you know, you could really latch on to? Yeah, I think like the initial stuff that Jamie had passed over to me had had Charlie as, as this character. He's a, he's a heroin addict, but he's a kind of functioning one uh, who very much kind of like holds down a nine to five job, uh, you know, rents a flat, kind of has a, a life outside of, of his addiction. Which was a really kind of interesting angle that I don't think I'd seen a lot of before. Um, and there's there's a lot of research. I spoke to to some people, and there's a, a fair few interviews online about people who live that kind of life, who who do have this kind of monkey on their back. But there's, there was one particular interview I read with a guy who was saying like he can never go on holiday, like he just can't leave his town because he can't get away from his dealer or his supply of the heroin like he's still got a job he's still got a group of mates but he could never travel because he couldn't ever be away from it i was like that's such a sad sad idea um i think i don't know if that then folded into the script then jamie with with joe's character because i think that, that was a late addition so that, that might have been even discovery from that which is another great way of kind of working in this this looser way is that ideas can be brought late in the day and jamie's very open to changing and adapting things which is which is really cool so yeah i'm not sure if that answered any questions but that's a there's a ramble <laughs> and, and what about for you sky what was the kind of route into your character for you yeah i guess a lot of it was basing it on my personal kind of addictions that i had dealt with growing up and like i very much kind of could relate to the character i felt like definitely like the main part of my 20s was quite similar in a way I was always trying to seek love and sex and approval and that kind of stuff so it, it kind of rung true with me in in a way that I was like wow I would like to kind of get into her and see why but I think her story is a lot different obviously she's dealt with sexual abuse um but I just found it really interesting kind of using my own experiences to kind of go down that route and my own pain, my daddy issues, you know, lots of different things where I was kind of drawing into the character to kind of like find the source of the pain, basically. And uh, Jamie, with you um, sort of more broadly, um, you know, a lot of your films deal with, you know, uh, people on the margins, especially in the city of Brighton, which is where, uh, you know, where, you, where you're from. Um, how does your experience of kind of being raised and spending so much time in Brighton, uh, you know, how has that inflected your films as your career has gone on? Um, I think I'm very lucky growing up in Brighton. I think I've been sport and I think I didn't maybe realise it until I went to some other places. Um, and, kind of, you kind of, and, you know, you kind of go, oh, shit, yeah, no, Brighton's amazing. And full of, uh, you know, mostly, you know, good, kind, open people. Um, so I kind of, you know, I, same from my, you know, growing up, my household, you know, I am um, very supportive and kind of, yeah, I just kind of being able to write and set and do all my stuff here um, just feels, I don't know, it feels very easy. It feels very safe, you know, with God specifically. I don't want to say that that's the kind of Brighton I grew up in because it's not, but it's kind of 
there's elements to it. There's the kind of, I guess, the slightly darker side to it. Um, but, you know, equally on other films I've done, I've gone, bang, here's Brighton Station, here's the pavilion, here's the lanes, here's all that. I think I think as a city, it offers so much. Um, certainly when it comes to when it comes to film, I think, um, and I think there's still plenty more left of it to shoot. Um, but this was, yeah, I, I like this because it, it is it is set in Brighton. But as far as I know, we don't say the movie's ever set in Brighton, do we? No, I don't, no, think, so. I, no I don't think so. So that I kind of liked as well. And obviously the colour, it's, it's inspired by a lot of American cinema as well. So like, it's kind of that small town, small city vibe. But for those who do know Brighton, who, who have been to Brighton, who certainly who are born and raised in Brighton, which I'm, I'm lucky enough to be, I think you'll you'll see snippets in it where you just go, oh, yeah. Like there's, um, we shot in somewhere called Sussex Heights and people lost their shit about it at the screening <laughs> in, in Bright. Like there was like gasps. I was like, oh my God, it's that, it's that building. You know what I mean? Because if you're from Brighton, you know it. And if you don't, you don't. Um, so yeah, I, I consider myself very lucky to be able to, to, to film movies here. I think Brighton's just a special place. And, you know, you mentioned that there's still so much more of it to be shot. Um, you know, do, do you plan on staying in Brighton for the foreseeable future in your, uh, you know, in your film career? Um, yeah, I mean, I've done, a, I've done a lot here. I've done 15 or 16 um, sort of in and around Brighton. My next one's America, but then the one after that is, is very much Brighton. It's quite a, a passion project as well. So, yeah, I, I kind of always... If I could shoot the next movie in the American movie, if I could somehow cheat Brighton for Los Angeles, New York, I, I would. I'd have a go. I suggested it. it didn't go. Green <laughs> um, so, screen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll always, I'll always shoot here. I'll always. This would always be home. This would always be the, you know, the place I'm most comfortable and I'm most happy shooting. So yeah, I'll definitely be doing more movies in Brighton for sure. And for uh, George and Sky as well, what what was your kind of experience like of shooting in Brighton? You know, I, I don't know how much time you've spent there in the past, but what, what was the impression of you know being you know making a having a creative endeavor in the city? Um, I mean, for yeah, me it was yeah. Go sorry, George, you go. No, 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 you go. <laughs> I was gonna say it was just great because I was staying like right in this little Airbnb and I could just walk to work every day. So it was perfect. There was no cars. It wasn't like a long journey to get anywhere. It was just wonderful. It was very local. And I think Jamie hiring quite a few local actors as well for certain scenes was great. It just felt like a real kind of like community family vibe. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually from a town just down the road, like 25 minutes away. That time gets short every time I try and describe it, um, called Seaford. So I kind of grew up around Brighton anyway, and my career, Jamie put me in my first ever movie. So my my career kind of started there and might well have ended there with this movie um, <laughs> and with Jamie. Um, so, and it's just amazing to, to go back and like, I would bite anybody's hand off to go and work down there again and work with Jamie and Sky again. Like it was an amazing experience. And you know, it's mad doing it in 10 days. But mm -hmm. as Sky said, there's a proper community vibe where everybody's like just mucks in. And it's it's quite different than on kind of bigger projects or longer projects that in their own way are exhausting. But this this is like a different kind of it's like an adre you run on adrenaline rather than anything else um and, and yeah that there's no like easy. hierarchy or anything absolutely yeah and and that kind of feels uniquely brighton as well very very liberal film set which is lovely um just to go back to, to sort of a more specific point on the film um i, I suppose this is uh put more uh, specifically to jamie um what was the reason for uh sky's character not being given a, a name you know she's just known uh you know on the credits as tattoo girl Mm -hmm. yeah it's come up a lot that question uh, <laughs> yeah it's for us it was it, i think people think that it was just like oh it was really it's just tattoo girl and that was it and there was no more to it and it, there was kind of a lot there was a lot to it there was a lot of conversation the idea behind it i guess it was inspired by i don't know if you think of the bride and kill bill or 
uh, Ryan Gosling's character in, in Drive, the idea of this this mystery element that we wanted for the, for that character, you know, it's it, Charlie's character says it at the start, it all started with this fucking tattoo, um, and then back, and then we're into this story, and it's kind of, is it real? Is it not real? But the, the main thing was kind of the familiarity that a name gives a character. You know, if we had called her Jean or Linda, I think Linda might have been on the list. There was, we had a list. I remember we had a list at some point. Linda. Was Linda on the list? Or did I just imagine that? Definitely made that one up. No, made no that way up. we yeah. would have approved Linda. Linda um, but like, yeah, imagine she was called Linda. For me, like the, the film just doesn't, work in the same way it doesn't it doesn't have that same sort of mystery the same sort of power so we definitely had a list we went back and forth but it it actually felt more powerful um to keep the character as as and i don't see her as tattoo girl but you know you that's mm. what that's what you put in the credits and i think that's what people see um but yeah, that was the kind of idea behind it to 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 really keep that that mystery on it. Because some people watch the movie and kind of go, well, "Did it happen? Is it all like a? Is it all a trip? Is it this? Is it that?" Um, and we kind of wanted to lean into that a little bit. So that was kind of from my head where it, where it came from. But we definitely we chatted about it, Sky. Right? Like we 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 chatted about it for a while. Yeah, yeah, loads. Um, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, was it, if, if there was anything else. To... No, that I think that's that's kind of it's kind of it. I, I think that's that's the yeah, that's the reason behind it. Um right. I'll just go from Jamie's point with that as well, that you know, I think what Jamie was saying about this idea that like, is it a fantasy? Did it really happen? Uh, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, is something that was just really interesting to kind of play with that form. But like I think we all agreed, like, yeah, it probably did. But if audiences want to take away that it didn't, there's hints in there and there's evidence in there to say it didn't as well as it did like it just lives in this kind of hazy filmy world and i know that was kind of one of the ins for me with charlie as a character was like him almost imagining himself becoming like an american film character throughout the throughout the story that he starts as this kind of like sullen guy working in a call center and then ends up with like a cool jacket and he's in a cool car with his girlfriend and they've just shot someone and he's like he's going on this trajectory that's like not necessarily fiction but not reality in this kind of hazy hazy world um and i think just yeah the, the tattoo girl thing kind of spins on that kind of plays on that idea and gives credence to people who want to believe that that yeah it gives it that, that like fantastical thing. element i guess mm. Mm. And uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left, but um, sort of related to that point, Jamie, um, you know, you've mentioned the influence of like American cinema on, on this film. And, you know, your work has often leaned into genre filmmaking quite a lot. You know, like you've had a film um, play at Fright Fest and, and, and whatnot. Um, and this film fits into, you know, a, a genre tradition as well. Uh, why is it that you think that, you know, stories or, or that genre filmmaking is the best medium for stories about people that are kind of on the margins? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a relatable element to it, factor to it. Like, I think if you look at horror as specific as a genre, you know, for me, where horror is, it's most effective is when the bad guys are human beings right i think there's this idea of there's nothing scary in the world of what one human being is capable of doing to another human being monsters ghosts all of that take that out of it i think you know and i guess it's troubled characters or you know so i guess the genre it allows us to kind of play with people's fears play with people's limits um put people out of their comfort zone um, and I think, you know, life, again, I say relatable because I think for a lot of us, life is not necessarily, we're not in our comfort zone a lot. Um, and I think people like this, they like this idea, of, especially now with sort of modern day audiences of like, we kind of, it's not as easy to trick people anymore. You've got to be cleverer with films. Uh, you certainly got to be cleverer with horror. You know, it's not enough to just have a bunch of characters go to a cabin, everyone gets killed, what, you know, what it's. People want more now and people, yeah, people just want a bit more from from the characters. Um, and I think, yeah, you know, genre, horror, dark comedy, that sort of just allows us to do it. And, and this idea of, you know, obviously there's there's loads of filmmakers that do it great. Tarantino certainly did it great in, in the 90s of 
laughing at things that un- you know they're uncomfortable laughing we shouldn't be laughing at this but we are you know it's a coping mechanism right mm. um so i think that's again it's just something that in in genre we're just allowed to, to to play with that a little bit um you know i think we could we could have pushed gods quite a lot and we could have made a, a similar film but pushed it and gone it more into a horror poetry if we wanted to the sort of the characters the world would have allowed us to do that um i think we could have made a musical i think we could have made a chris i think again so much of it is is character based most any any film i ever do but if it's christmas film musical whatever it all comes from the characters in the story and that's what appeals to me as, as a filmmaker but horror is and, and probably will always be my, my favorite genre well um Thank you, all three of you, for your time today. It's been really good to speak to you. Uh, out of time, unfortunately, but um, good luck with the film and congratulations again. And um, yeah, thank you again for joining me. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Matthew. So much. Thank you.